Nature is the source of all true knowledge. She has her own laws, her own logic. She has no effect without cause or an invention without a necessity. These are not the words of Mahi, or of Leonardo da Vinci. You must be really familiar with his painting Mona Lisa and the Last Supper, which I am sure all of you must have hung in your homes. So talking about me, I am Catherine Kurula. I am studying in the painting department, fourth year of Government Finance College, Chennai. So here I am to talk about the relationship of nature and artist. I especially thank Reverend Hema John for giving me this wonderful opportunity. The first drawing, let's go back to our childhood. So our first drawing must probably be the M-shaped mountains, uh, the sun in between and the S-shaped river flowing down the mountains. See, nature has always been an inspiration for all the world artists. It is an inspiration and it will be an inspiration. As we walk through the fancy cold roads of exhibition halls, you must have definitely wondered what these abstracts are. What is the inspiration behind the abstract paintings? And let me tell you a secret. Take the abstract painting and filter it. You know, let us filter it again and again. And what is the final outcome? The final outcome would be pure nature. So talking about myself, you know, I'm not uh, really fond of, you know, flowers or birds. But what I am really into is the landscapes and sceneries that give me a visual treat to my eyes. And second thing that, you know, uh, amazes me is the colors of nature. Let me tell you an example. The example would be the sunset and sunrise, of course, because you can see really patches of different colors in the sky. And the best example that I can give you is the Rainbow Mountains of Peru. You know, if you see this, this picture, you know, it's the most wonderful sight anyone can have. And this is the best example I could give about colors in nature. And the final thing, or uh, you know, what I consider is the apart from flora and fauna, is the people, the people, the culture, and the love that makes nature nature. Let me give you a brief uh, idea about how nature have inspired the artists. So, who are the first artists? Obviously, the first artist would be the cavemen. You know, they used art as a symbol to communicate and to identify. So, how did they draw? So, uh, the best, you know, cave paintings in India is the Ajanta and Elora caves. Uh, many of you must have heard about that. But what have they used in there? They have used charcoal for black color, and they took yellow from lanite. It's a stone with iron and used as yellow pigment for paint. And red they have taken from the hematite. It's a reddish black mineral. The white from the white line and blue from the lapis lazuli. It's a blue gemstone. And the green color was mixed with lamanite and lapis lazuli. Earth pigments and natural dyes are still being continued in this century. When man was born, the art was born. So, artists used caves as a, you know, canvas of nature. And they, you know, used sharp tools and, you know, these natural colors and they drew. As we go deeper into the Ajinta cave paintings, we can see panels of flowers and animals. You know, they have taken the designs of flowers and drawn beautifully. So from this we can understand that in those days the artists were deeply inspired by nature. Nature is really a very good reference for your paintings. The, the study of nature is really important as an artist. The study of objects, the study of nature is really really important. It helps us to understand 
the object. Let us take a flower. So, the study of a flower helps us to understand how it is formed, the shape. You know, it helps our painting to be better. After many centuries, let's think about the 19th century artist, Cloud Monet. He has once said that, I want to paint the way a bird sings. You know, Cloud Monet was really attached with nature. As you can see, he saw the world as colorful patches. And another artist was Vincent Van Gogh. He, talking about Vincent Van Gogh, he was uh, not a successful artist at those times. No, he was in a mental rehabilitation center and he had mental illness. But he saw nature as inseparably linked. In fact, mathematicians said that they could find the turbulence of swirling water in his paintings. Apart from the you know animals, birds, the nature trees, humans are the best example. The study of anatomy, human anatomy, is really important. So let us come to humans. So there is something called the cell art. These are the works of David S. Guther. He is a professor and is especially known for his watercolor paintings of cell interiors. And this is the coronavirus. He has developed a signature style of significant drawing. Even a cell in our body can contribute to art. So our whole body definitely plays an important role. Artists are often particularly keen observers and precise recorders of the physical conditions of the natural world. As a result, paintings can be a good resource for learning about ecology. I, I go to nature to escape from the reality. You know, it helps me stay creative. It helps me to heal myself. And it is a real stress burster. Nature has, you know, never given me a negative impact. Apart from the paintings, crafts are also linked with our ecology. These are the shell hangings that I have made. It is absolutely eco-friendly. Bamboo crafts, wood carvings, pottery, ceramics. Every craft has an element of ecology in it. Using wood scraps and natural waste for your artwork not only increases its beauty, but helps the ecology to stay in balance. It is us, you know, who is trying to destroy the nature. So what I think is that it is us who take nature as granted. So let's not do it and let's stay in peace and harmony.